This is How You Start to Disappear. That's the title of the new book by the greatly acclaimed Alberta writer Astrid Blodgett. It's her long-awaited second collection of short stories, which is just out via the renowned U of A Press, and she has launch events. One coming up this Sunday, September 24th, at the Red Deer Public Library, and with events also coming up in Calgary and in her hometown of Edmonton. I'm thrilled to say that the great Astrid Blodgett joins us at CKUA Studios right now to talk about this brilliant new book, Hello, Astrid. It is such a thrill to have you. Thank, thanks for being here with us. Well, thank you very much, Grant. Well, I suppose first off, of course, CKUA is an Alberta-wide broadcaster, so I, I, I would just love to ask you, this is such a very Albertan collection of yes. stories. It's yes. so specific, like in terms of setting, you know, you refer to Evansburg, you refer to North Country Fair, you refer to the <laughs> old school revolving restaurant in Edmonton, La Ronde. You know, I just wondered, what was it that made you want to plant these stories so firmly in the Albertan soil and be so specific in, in, in where you wish to couch these characters? It's, well, it's because I live here. And I think the more specific I can be as a writer, the more meaning the stories will have. And I know these places in Alberta so well, so why not? Yeah. I, I know you're an avid yeah. outdoors person yes. and uh, <laughs> love to walk, love to yeah. get out there and, uh, yeah. and be in nature. And, and boy, you really take us from one side of Albertan life to the other, from the rural to the urban and back again. Yeah. And I'm really struck by the way that you have in this book of making the reader feel some sort of empathy for characters who in many ways are doing monstrously cruel things to one another, but you really put us yeah. inside their minds. And it's, yeah. it's, it's an odd and, and insightful and uncomfortable feeling sometimes as a, as a reader. Yeah. What is it that, that draws you to that, to that style of characterization? I see this in the world all the time. I can't help but see the troubles people go through and the struggles and things hit people and they respond in different ways. And I, I must have a deep empathy for what's going on with them in order to want to keep writing about characters in this way. I feel like the people that we meet in these stories are all so, so vivid. I almost feel kind of sad and nostalgic each time I finish <laughs> a, a story yeah. and have to say goodbye yeah. to them. Uh, what is it about creating these tiny little universes in the format of the short story that, that keeps drawing you back in? Huh. I love the form. I love that you don't have to say too much and you can create a whole world in a small space. For me, a short story is more like a poem than it is like a novel. You don't need very many words. You do need words and you need enough words, but not too many. And it, it's something I love. I really get a sense of music all through this collection of short stories is clearly very near and dear to your heart. It's like uh, kind of resounding through a lot of the action here. And, you know, some of these characters play the bassoon or the clarinet, and, and there's a whole story set at a band camp. <laughs> What's yeah. your own history with music? My own history with music. Well, I was one of those kids who was not exposed to music early. I didn't have piano lessons, and I was very lucky that our school had a band program. And the first year of band in grade seven, I just assumed you had to know how to play an instrument. So I didn't take band, but I figured it out that year. They teach you. So <laughs> just by some fluke, they've never done this since. In the next year, they had a beginner band program. So I signed up and I had no idea what I was going to play. And I just picked the weirdest instrument I could see, which was the oboe. I didn't know it was the weirdest instrument, but I started to play the oboe. And I tell you, it gave me so many opportunities as a young person. I traveled to Europe with the orchestra. I traveled to, well, when I was very young, we went as far as Hinton, and I thought that was pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> but it gave me opportunities, just starting out on a band instrument. Mm. And do yeah. you still play? Not the oboe, because it's uh, very demanding. Sure. <laughs> but I play uh, Renaissance and Baroque music. Wow. Still. And, it's, and I love it. Yeah. And you're, and you're a big fan of uh, classic examples on Monday nights, I understand. That's I right. Our whole, our whole family is, yes. <laughs> 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 yeah. Now, I know that you have this deep connection with the outdoors. Yeah. Love yeah. to walk. Yeah. Uh, 
mm-hmm. how does that contribute to your creative process? The you know being out in nature and and you know hoofing it for for uh, many many a long dusty kilometer at a time. Are, are you sort of composing in your mind as you go? Only when I walk alone. You know, I've I've heard this too that walking with a group or even one person is very different than walking alone. If I'm walking with somebody else, I have a conversation. If I'm walking alone, as I was today on the way here, I I was thinking about many things and what I would be writing and all kinds of things. So I think walking is fantastic for that. But also we, we observe things differently when we're by ourselves. We see things. So you don't have your headphones on, no. pumping some music or no. podcasts or CKUA? <laughs> no. no, that's right, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, the stories in this collection, they often portray people in their youth who are you know, frequently being harmed in some way, often by people very close to them or even, mm-hmm. you know, people mm-hmm. in their own families, and, and it just cuts so deep. Mm-hmm. Um, taken as a collection... What do you think it is that this tells us about who we are as as a society or 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 perhaps how we could orient ourselves differently in order to have more fruitful and and healthy relationships? I think really everybody just wants to be loved um, and to love someone. And often that doesn't happen or love becomes uh, bound up or twisted into other things. And that's just how I observe the world. <laughs> and how to change that, I don't know. That's just who we are, I think. Yeah. Well, one thing's for sure, and that is that this collection is extremely thought-provoking and mm-hmm. a very emotional journey. Uh, I've admired it so much. Oh, and thank you. I'm thank really you. glad it's getting out there in the world, yeah. too. You're, yeah. you're hitting the road. You're hitting the uh, yes. book launch yeah. circuit. Uh, yeah. What do you enjoy about these events that are coming up, you know, in, in Red Deer and in <sighs> Calgary and Edmonton? I love reconnecting with old friends because, you know, I've been to writing retreats at the Banff Centre, at Strawberry Creek Lodge. I used to take writing workshops in Edmonton. It's really nice to see people in person again. The last few years, many of these events have been online. Now they're in person. In Calgary, I'll see people I met in different, you know, different workshops and retreats. So I'm really looking forward to that. Well, it's yeah. wonderful. And uh, if folks would like to come on out, you can catch Astrid Blodgett as part of this series of book launch events for This Is How You Start to Disappear, just published by the U of A Press. There'll be a launch event this Sunday, September 24th at the Red Deer Public Library's Snell Auditorium beginning at 1230. And it's a triple header that also includes authors Ruth Dyke Federo and Lori Hannell. You can also catch Astrid Blodgett at events October 4th at Calgary's Owl's Nest Books and in her hometown of Edmonton, November 9th at the Idlewild Library. And you can pick up the book, of course, at those events at your finer local bookstores and through the U of A Press, uap.ualberta.ca. Once again, the book is This Is How You Start to Disappear and the brilliant Alberta author is Astrid Blodgett. And Astrid, thank you so much for being here and joining us and, and congratulations on this amazing new work of yours. Thank you very much. And of course, what we mostly do here is play music. I know that you love music and music is some, sometimes central to your fiction writing as well, uh, thematically. What, if, any, if we were to play, press play on something right now, does something jump to the top of your mind by any chance? Something for Two Recorders by Telemann. Beautiful. Okay, let's do it. Thank you, Astrid. Thank you.